It's Friday night. It's lockdown. Let's booze it. Right, let's crack straight on, shall we? First of all, thanks to Matt Walton. He was the one that came up with the idea of tearing all the alcoholic beverages. I thought that would be a bit tricky. There's so many of them in the world. There's hundreds of beers for a start. Where, where, where would you start? Uh, then I just thought, well, here's something simpler. I'll just tear all the booze that we've got in the house. Um, so a couple of notes before we get started. This is a tasting session, so I have brought my spittoon. I, um, oh, I went wine tasting once, and I, I, at first I thought, I'm not going to use the spittoon. It's lovely wine, I'm just going to drink it. And I was drunk by about quarter to eleven in the morning. So I've learnt my lesson there. Also, I know quite a lot of you are millennials, and I don't want to set a bad example. Uh, so with that in mind, let's have a look at the tiering system. Okay, pretty simple system really. Uh, top of the shop, best booze. Uh, next best thing, good grog. In the middle, drunk drink. That's the kind of a drink that you'll be drinking if you just want to get drunk, don't really mind what it tastes like. Uh, last resort, liquor. That's when there's really nothing else left to drink and you could just about bear it. And then there's horrible hooch. A terrible drink that you really don't want any part of. Okay, let's jump in at the deep end. Whiskey. This is uh, Scotch whiskey, 12 years old. Merry Christmas from somebody. Don't know what that is, that's from a company. Um, I'm not gonna even put this in a glass. I'm just gonna just go straight for it. I'm just gonna take a swig. Hmm, that's actually quite nice. Um, I have a thing about uh, whiskey. I think it'd be really cool to drink whiskey. It just feels like a cool drink. It's what Humphrey Bogart drinks in um, in all his movies. Uh, and I'd love to be able to drink whiskey, but it, I just don't think it's that nice. I mean, that's okay. It's got a nice taste. It's quite smooth. But I, I don't think I've ever woken up the next morning when I've drunk whiskey and thought, hmm, glad I drank that whiskey. I have to say, I'm really sorry. I know this is going to be deeply unpopular. It goes in last resort liquor. Right, next up, let's go for an old classic bit of rosé. This is a Saria. Where's it from? Italy, probably. Um, I think rosé is a massively underrated drink. Let's have a taste of this. Mm, mm. Bit of raspberry, bit of vanilla in there. I really like rosé. I haven't got anything bad to say about it. Not quite as good as it's darker red cousin though is it um so i'm gonna put it in good grog up next we've got cornutta this is it here uh it's been made for us by our godchildren in romania not actually children don't worry they're not, they're not sort of children they're making strong alcoholic beverages to give to people in england but they're, they're adults um one of them also made this this little doll of me here hello it's me um, so this is made from a kind of cherry, I don't really understand it, it's not a cherry I've ever heard of. It's a syrupy, sweet sort of liqueur. Mm. Really nice, you don't want to drink too much of it, for lots of reasons. Um, I swallowed that one because it's a gift, I can't, um, I can't spit it out, be rude. Uh, and also, I can't really put it anywhere else except for best booze, but that is where it belongs. And now we come to this, Woo Woo Cocktail. A blend of cranberry, peach snaps and vodka flavours mixed with alcohol. It just says mixed with alcohol. That's, it's just alcohol of some kind. So we've had this in the cupboard for years. It's been in the back of the cupboard for years. This actually uh, went off in 2011, but the seal isn't broken. So I'm sure it's gonna be fine. Let's have a taste. I'll tell you now, oh my God. Oh, it's, it stinks, it's, it's so sickly. Look at the colour of that, oh my God. Okay, I'm spitting this one. Mmm, mmm, ah, oh. oh my God, it's just horrible. It's kind of tasteless, but also just a little bit like a horrible squash flavour. It's one of the worst things I've ever drunk. Um, that is going in horrible hooch, no doubt about it. 
Right, to rum next. Uh, Havana Club rum. This has also been in our cupboard for quite a long time. I think the first, very first time I got even a little bit tipsy was on Bacardi, um, thanks to a Scoutmaster. No, that won't. let's not go into that story. Um, right, but so I know it's great in mojitos, I know you should have it with Coke or lemonade or something, but for the purposes of this experiment, I'm going to try drinking rum neat, and I think this is for the first time in my life, and I'm going to judge it on its neatness, on the on the neatness of the rum. Oh, it's strong. It, it smells quite bad. Yeah. I'd like to like rum. I mean, it's nice in cakes and stuff. And truffles, very nice and truffles, but that's not great. Last resort liquor. Right after that, I need something a little bit lighter. So I've gone for a Brew Dog Indie Independent Pale Ale. Weirdly, it's one of the very few beers I've got in the house at the moment. Um, I'm a big fan of pale ale. I think this will clean my palate quite nicely. But I'm probably not going to spit this one. Let's have a little taste. Yeah, really good pale ale like that. Best booze. So there's actually three homemade brews amongst this collection of booze. Uh, we've had the Cornata, we're gonna go for the second one now. This is actually a rhubarb gin that I made last year by steeping a load of rhubarb and a ton of sugar and a whole bottle of gin in one of those special jars. We left it for a month. And uh, this is actually almost finished because it is really nice. But let's just have a little taste. I'll probably, I probably won't spit this because I know it's nice. Um, I love gin, I love rhubarb. Really smooth, got a nice alcoholic kick to it. But the rhubarb comes through really strongly. Best booze! Well, while we're on the gin kick, let's just have a classic gin and tonic. Why not? This is a, a Hortus, or Hortus, London dry gin, which my wife was given uh, last Christmas. Haven't cracked it open yet. This is very much a summer drink, isn't it? Pour a bit in there. I know um, previously I said I was just gonna do the rum based on the neatness. I'm not going to with the gin. Because I've had the rhubarb gin, that's something else. And, you know, gin and tonic. Of course, I've gone for the uh, fever tree, as you should do. Now, Schweppes is right out. Okay, let's have a nice gin and tonic. Oh my God, that's delicious. Oh, I know I'm putting so many there, but, well, oh, that's best booze. Well, we move on to uh, Prosecco now. This is a Sainsbury's Taste the Difference Conegliano Prosecco. Uh, belongs to my wife. Hopefully she won't mind me doing it for this uh, experiment. I haven't asked, but there we go. Let's pop this open. She absolutely loves Prosecco, my wife. Um, oh, oh, that was disappointing. Mm. I thought it was gonna have a nice pop to it. Let's have a little taste of this. Prosecco. Yeah, it's very charming to be given a nice pretty glass of uh, Prosecco when you go to a big event, perhaps a garden party or a wedding or something. It sort of kicks things off very nicely. Um, it is very, very nice and quite refreshing. Um, I do tend to steer clear of drinking a lot of sparkling wines though. Um, they can make me aggressive. Um, so I steer clear of it, but it is nice in small quantities. So I'm gonna say, good grog. Now my wife, she very much enjoys a cider. She, she doesn't, she drinks hardly anything, but if she's going to, it's either Prosecco or cider. That's, that's pretty much her, her go-to drinks. Um, maybe a Cosmopolitan, if we're doing something special. Um, so when, she, when I told her I was doing this, she didn't want me to open one of her precious ciders. That's just to have one swig out of it. I mean, I, I totally understand that. So what she did the other night, she had most of a bottle of a pear cider, a recorded leaf pear cider, and left me a bit in the bottom. That's now been sitting in the kitchen, marinating away for a couple of days, because I was supposed to do this a few days ago, didn't get round to it. I'm gonna taste it now, let's see how the uh, pear cider goes. I, I, I'm not really a fan of cider. It's a, it's a last resort liquor for me, I'm sorry. 
Okay, let's have some tequila. I, like everyone else, every normal person, sort of drinks tequila with lemon and salt. Um, that's not how you're supposed to drink it, apparently. You're supposed to sort of sip it and enjoy the, the taste and everything. Um, you know, we're not going to do that, are we? Uh, I mean, it's a very, very strong smell, tequila. It's, it's a bit like whiskey. If you drink a lot of it, the next day you're going to be smelling it coming out your pores for about the next 48 hours. Let's do it properly. I'm not even going to spit it out. Mm. 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 There's only one place it's going. Drunk drink, and I'll tell you why. Because you do not ever just go, hi darling, shall we have a nice tequila with our dinner tonight? That never happens. You only drink tequila when you're getting drunk, and that's fine. It's a party drink, that's what it's there for. It does a job brilliantly, drunk drink. So from the drama of a tequila, let's go to the more refined cognac. This is actually a Moldovan cognac. I've got into this because of some friends in Romania and they swear that this uh, Moldovan stuff is, is really good, every bit as good as uh, the best French stuff. And they're right, it's really nice. In the, in the winter months, I like to take a small hip flask of it to uh, football matches, when we're allowed to go to football matches and um, just have a nip of it at half time to keep me warm. And it's a really smooth, very almondy taste to it. Let's have a nice taste here. Mm. And that is definitely going in good grog. But now we are getting to the real hard stuff. Uh, this is a, this is from Romania. Again, this is a Tsuika, which I've talked about on the uh, vlog before. Uh, mostly Tweaker is made out of plums, it's made in people's homes, um, in stills, and then it's decanted into water bottles. I'm amazed it doesn't eat through the plastic of water bottles, that just shows you how incredible plastic is and how durable it is. Um, this one's actually made from pears though, it's a bit smoother, it's not quite as strong, um, much sought after. It's a very, I mean, in terms of, in terms of um, Tweaker, very smooth. I'm not gonna have a lot of this, it's really strong, and I'm not gonna spit it out because people in Romania do watch me do these, or at least they say they do, and um, that's why I love Tweaker glass. Uh, they would be very upset if I wasted, you know, top quality Tweaker. This is, I mean, it doesn't look like it, but this is really the, the best stuff. So um, yeah, this is pretty strong, here we go. Uh, I can't, in all good consciousness, put that anywhere except for best booze. Um, just just don't do what I did the first time I had it uh, and try and impress your future father-in-law by drinking seven shots of it. Don't ever do that. Right, not going to spend too long on this. Red wine is absolutely delicious. This is a Chinon from the Loire Valley. It's a, a 2018 vintage, um, you know, People say there are good wines and bad wines. I honestly don't think I've ever had a red wine that I couldn't drink. Um, I know we're getting a bit full up the top there, but best booze, delicious red wine. Mm. Mm. Wait there a minute. Okay, and finally, we come to vodka, and it's a very special vodka, it's Black Death Vodka. Now, um, this has actually been in our freezer since uh, 2002. And Black Death Vodka, when I wrote my first book, Vodka with Chocolate Chasers, I did a sort of a, a tie-in deal with them. They catered the, the, um, the launch party of the book. So they gave us like two or three cases of vodka and we had sea breeze cocktails um, at the launch, it was brilliant. And this thing just sort of sat in the freezer and moved around, it's gone through two house moves now. And um, it only came out a few weeks ago because we had to make space when we were panic buying for the start of the coronavirus. Um, all our toilet roll had to go in the freezer, there's nowhere else to put it. I mean, it does just smell like mess. It's just not that nice. 
I, I don't even drink it when I'm out trying to get drunk, which is not very often these days. So, uh, sorry, Vodka. It's no reflection on the lovely people at Black Death, but last resort liquor. Well, that brings us to the end of my mammoth booze tasting session. All the booze from the cupboard, all the booze from the fridge, all on the table, all tasted by me and tiered to the best of my ability. I hope I didn't upset anyone like I did a few weeks ago when uh, Robbie Knox took exception to my slagging off of bananas. It's just my personal opinion. It's, it's all I can offer. Um, so that's it. I'm about to get rid of the disgusting content to my spittoon. That looks a bit like vomit. And of course, more importantly, get rid of the awful woo-woo cocktail that's been sitting in the back of our cupboard for the last nine years. If there's anything at all that you'd like me to uh, to tear in the future, do let me know in the comments below or any other ideas of things that you want to see me do. You know, I am in some ways your performing monkey. Just uh, let me know and I will consider all comments. Uh, I'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Cupboard and all the booze from the fridge in one table, all tasted. Here's my sp spittoon. That's what it looks like in there. You can just about pull. Oh.